ball. The flag stays down. Heaney! Oh! They scored again! It's Davis again! It's job done now! Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of the Northern Ireland podcast. As you can see today we are joined by Paul Smith and Jordan James. All right guys, how are we doing? Hey guys. So uh, obviously nice to be back in the setup and back again after uh, last year. Yeah, definitely. I think it's a very exciting time for everyone in the squad and looking forward to starting a new campaign. And obviously you Paul moving up from the 21s into the senior squad, how's that been for you? Yeah, it's been good. I mean, the boys welcome you with my arms and it's, it makes it easier for you to come in, especially with a lot of other young boys that come in as well, like Daniel, Jordan Thompson and, and Connor Hazard as well. So first of all, Jordan, just to say to you about kind of your international career as such, we were talking to Michael O'Neill and uh, he said about the Switzerland game when you made your debut, he said about 10 minutes to go, he felt that he just had to throw you on, you know, last chance of dice, and he said that you were a player that he wanted to bring on. Is that somewhere something you felt being a part of the international setup that the manager really is a, a fan of yours? Yeah, definitely. I think we're keeping uh, quite regular contact, and I think he's um, put his trust in me in quite a few occasions. So um, hopefully, like I say, when I come away, I just try and get as many minutes as I can and, and do as best as I can for him and, and, and then the team. And when did it kind of all start? Kind of Michael's first conversation to you talking about playing for Northern Ireland? Uh, it was just before the Germany game. Germany at home, he rang me up and obviously told me I'd be in that squad and then obviously that squad I'd just trained. Um, I, at, I, mean, I was on the bench for Germany and then I wasn't on the bench away at, um, I think it was Norway. Um, but then that was obviously my first squad and then I haven't been out of the squad since so it's been good and really positive. And then obviously they've come on in a World Cup playoff qualifier must have meant something? Yeah, of course. I don't really think there's many bigger games I could have come on in and obviously um, it was obviously a good experience but a bit of a bit of sweet one because I didn't get through but I think the lads were brilliant on the night and just really unlucky that we went out. And then obviously since, you know, we were saying as well about the Republic game, I remember talking to you afterwards and seeing you in the tunnel, me and Andy were talking about that. About, often, it? <laughs> <laughs> about you know, that, you know, the save from Dan Randolph, obviously yeah. for yourself, how, how do you view that looking back on it? Still got it, obviously. I should have scored. There's no doubt about it. Um, obviously, it was a good save, but just good. Not only scored, my first goal from. And uh, obviously, since then, how's it been being a part of the international setup? How have you kind of felt being a part of it all here? Yeah, good. I think obviously the more the more times you come away, obviously the the easier it gets. I think obviously it's a good good group of lads. Um, obviously, you get a lot more used to the training and the way the manager works. And like I say, the more you come away, the more beneficial it is for you. And then. Paul, kind of on the under-21 aspect of it all, um, you said there about Daniel Ballard, Jordan Thompson, how much does it kind of give to you guys to be a part of the senior setup now and moving up? No, it's good. I mean, it is, uh, especially when you're playing with the boys who play in the Premier League, Scottish, Scottish League as well, and you play with top, top quality players, so it's always nice to play with, with players like that, and for the young ones that come in, it's it's always something that you got to relish and, and enjoy, because and, you don't get much much time in the international, and once you do, you, you take it with both hands and enjoy it. And how much does it kind of mean? You know, you have playing for Linfield and you have made the move across the water to then now play for Northern Ireland. Yeah, it was massive. I think things happened so quickly. It was just a phone call and next minute I was on a plane to keep you and contracts. It was always nice of that. And once I got, got there, it was just to get into the first teams. I set myself targets and I got there and was to get into the Northern Ireland squad and I got my chance uh, with the Euros. It took me away to training camp and... It was one of the best experiences I had with Northern Ireland. And then um, I had a few other chances like uh, South Korea as well. I got my goal and it was just shot on from there. I was going to say, I remember talking to you in the tunnel as well after that one. You said about how you even dreamt that you were going to score in that game. Yeah. No, it was, it, it was good to get to get minutes in general because we played Thursday against Spain and it was a tough game against some good players and I didn't expect to get a call up to even get a, a chance in the South Korea game. But thankfully I took it and... It's given me the chance to get into the first team. And obviously yourself now is at Accrington. How has that all been? Yeah, it's different. Uh, different to keep you are, but it's all good. Um, the players welcome me in. Billy Key, he's a good lad. I don't know him. Um, and the managers looked after me since I got there, so it's given me game time, and that's all really I wanted. And then just to kind of talk about this week before we head to fan questions, um, Jordan, first of all, obviously, when the fixtures came out, I think everyone knows what we want to aim from these first two double headers is that obviously reflected in, in the squad and the feeling amongst the squad? Yeah, I think we've pretty much separated it up to two two different groups. Obviously the group that we're in, um, 
and we all know that if we've got any chance of going through, uh, basically we have to win the next four games, um, both games at home, both games away. That's the aim, so hopefully that's what we'll do. And what's kind of the difference in that? Obviously having to be the team that go on the attack over the next four games? Um, yeah, I think obviously, like I said, in the last few games, I think we've been performing really well with the ball. Um, just the results haven't been going our way, so hopefully the start of a new campaign and hopefully, like I say, we'll, we'll, get, we'll get a good start and, and we'll go from there. And how much would it mean, obviously, starting in Belfast as well, having those two home fixtures to start with? Yeah, I think it's a massive advantage. Um, doesn't matter what team comes here, I think they know they're in for a, a tough night. Um, so, like I said, it's a big advantage uh, having the first two games at home. We need to take, we need to take advantage of that ourselves. And then, Paul, obviously, for yourself, how much would it mean to kind of be involved and to get on, on the pitch as yeah, well? Yeah, it'd be massive. I mean, getting involved in general with the Northern Ireland squad and being called up is always a massive achievement. And to get minutes would be a bonus to that. So, just fingers crossed, cheer my well and get my chance. And speaking on the other guys as well, you know, you said about Daniels and Jordan and even Jamal came up from the 21s, like for them to now be in the setup ahead of the whole year of 2020 qualify is obviously a chance for them to maybe one time stake a place. In the yeah, team. I mean, Mike won the ECs, not afraid to, to give people a chance. If you give me a chance, you look at Jamal, you look at Bailey, they're both playing regularly for Northern Ireland and, and it's just a good, good stepping stone for them and fingers crossed that the boys, the young ones that came through now can also get a chance like that and take it. And I think uh, a lot of people say as well about the pace that we have in the team. We've basically got the two of you right here, sat in front <laughs> of us. Um, Feed would say anyway that you two are the quickest in the team. Um, what kind of does that kind of add to the dynamic of the Northern Ireland team? Is that something that you guys work on is utilising that? Uh, yeah, I think obviously the manager really has this, there's quite a few of us with pace um, in the team. Obviously Joe Dallas is really quick. He's got really good running power. So obviously Paul, myself, Gav's really quick. Um, so yeah, I think obviously the Gav will be looking to take advantage of that and, and use it to our strengths. And is it kind of something, Paul, that you think can give us an advantage when it comes to like to Germany Holland, something that we can use? Yeah, it's massive. I mean, you know the quality of Germany and Holland have. I mean, I think you won't be really attacking much in them games because they'll be trying to attack on you constantly. So I think that's it. the outlet of the game would be really counter attacking, have the pace in my hand to get in behind them. So. But we'll wait and see. I mean, you see what happened in the, the Euros when Northern Ireland played Germany. It was also a good game. But we've got to wait and see. So as, you, as you'll know, this will, that's probably the easier bit now. We're going to head to the fan questions. So this is where it's going to get more difficult. <laughs> yeah, so we call this section the Gala Zone. Cue music. Uh, music are you Top Gun fans? You ever watched Top Gun? No. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be lost on YouTube. What's Top Gun? <laughs> that's staying in? Just roll, just roll the music. Yeah. <laughs> this is part of the music. I'll start. Playing. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, I'm just like, myself on a dark room here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, right. So yeah, this is going to be the fan question. So if you want to spin the, the podcast wheel, then we'll pick out our person. Saving his energy for the game. Like, yeah. Whatever that's been. <laughs> right, uh, so, first one is uh, a voice clip. So that one. Hi, Ryan here. Jordan Jones sounds like a superhero. If you were to be a superhero, which one would you be? It must be the double J superhero. Double J, yeah. A superhero, yeah. It does sound a bit like a wee. Spider Man. Is he a superhero? Yeah. Oh, is he? Spider Man. He is, man. Of course he is. Oh, he's a superhero. Yeah. He's the only one who would come to mind. Oh, why why is Spider Man? I don't know. I just know who Spider Man is. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know him, but obviously. <laughs> <laughs> I just know him. He doesn't know Spider Man. What about you, Paul? Superman. Superman. Of course, you want to fly, Ellie. Like. I mean, I think everyone wants to fly. Yeah, no, I guess Superman. <laughs> <laughs> really? Spider Man is. Spider Man. We'll take Spider Man. Okay, do you want to spin the wheel? Come on, good spin. No, my dear, what? Just get coffee. Just send me. No, it's not. Six. All right, okay. Yes, it's dangerous reading that. Uh, so this one is from a, a certain Conor McLaughlin, <laughs> and he, he wants to know how many men, 
How many minutes do you have to do on a Sunday to get Jordan's tan? Oh, it's quite it's funny actually, right? Because we've just <laughs> we've <laughs> just been to Tenerife as a squad with Kilmarnock. I would say I've done a few like nine minutes before we went just to get my base tan. <laughs> but then it's it's just a tan off Tenerife, so a few nine minutes. A few nine minutes. Is that, is that, is that, is that, that a generic time? Is it? Okay, yeah. On a stand up, stand up, are more powerful. So nine minutes is the stand up. Nine minutes, yeah. Right. And then. I did. <laughs> I put, I'd done like three before we went and then since I've come back I've been on like probably another three and a half so I don't know how many minutes that is but that's how many Yeah, Yeah, keep it topped up like that. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Summer's coming up so. That's good. Had the in the corner block and skin tone category before. Yeah, right. so. I mean I don't go on holiday. You don't go on holiday. <laughs> you don't go on holiday. <laughs> right, really. Uh, right. So do you want to spin again? Six and eight. Six and eight. Six and eight. Six and eight. What's the chances? Okay, so it's a voice note. This one is from the London Northern Ireland Supporters Club. Hi guys, it's Neil Anderson from the London Northern Ireland Supporters Club. Uh, we'd just like to know what's the bid like in the camp ahead of the games. And a question for you both. What would it mean to you to score the opening goal in this campaign at home and get it off to a winning start? You want you answer the first bit about the mood. I forgot what he said. The mood in the camp. Oh yeah, the mood in the camps. I know that's a buzzing, and I like, guess I can't wait to, to get the game on Thursday and get those winning ways. Um, and for me to score, if it ended up being the winner, it'd be one of another great achievement for me. And a very good feeling in front of the cup, hopefully. Yeah, like Paul says, I think everyone's um, really excited and, and desperate to get on the pitch himself and. I think if uh, if I scored the opening goal, it had it had made a lot to see my first international goal, and that's such a, a big time as well. I'd I'd love to I'd love for that to happen. Obviously, uh, whenever Paul gets on the score sheet for Northern Ireland or his club, you have the the back foot. Yeah. And uh, if you get on the score sheet for Northern Ireland, do you have something? Well, I don't have a back foot. <laughs> yeah, do you have something, mate? Forward roll. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we just score daft sometimes, don't you? Probably slide on your knees. I would slide on my knees at Kilmarnock, but I've got Astro and I'd spare my knees on. <laughs> so I'd probably slide on my knees, to be honest. Okay, can I go for it again? Fine. Okay. This is from Alan Parkhill. Uh, who is the most skilled member of the squad? So we'd say most skillful. Like who's the Ronaldinho? Jordan wants me to he say. He wants to say so, so bad. <laughs> <laughs> he wants me to say he's the so same bad. Um, there's a lot of good players yeah, skillful on the ball. To be fair, the likes of Jordan, Gavin White, um, himself. I think Josh McGuinness would be trying to claim claim the fame there, wouldn't he? Rugby, not footy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, there is. There's a lot of good skillful players in the in the squad. And like I say, it's Jordan and Gavin would be up there. And I think I'll put myself. In. Yeah, so yeah, someone who yeah, fancies themselves as like a freestyler? Is it someone who would fancy yeah, themselves yeah. like to do a lot of tricks? Is that something that... Yeah, who's throwing the ball and behind their head and all that? No. There's not really any time you can really yeah, do yeah, that, no. so... That I wouldn't know, but I think obviously in the games there's, there's quite a few of us who try and get on it and express ourselves, so... I'll just say what he said. <laughs> and put him in the same bucket. You've seen someone like flying up the wing and then maybe going around the back of the leg and crossed it in. Who would do that in the team? Do you think you have that in your locker yourself? Yeah. Yeah. Would, you, would, you, would you definitely the first to start that in? Yeah. So against yeah. Valerie, should we? <laughs> Keep it clean. Yeah. Right. Tends to talk about trend like games, but I'll try out this. Really, Conor McLaughlin, who did he eat that mate? Oh, yeah. Two in a row. Yeah. 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 That was good, that. That is unreal. That was unreal. Quality. Right, uh, go for it again then. Who can track the numbers now? Yeah, we definitely are. Yeah, that. We have another yeah, that's good. About five, six, seven, eight. Okay. So Jack Devitt. Does the camp still have a positive mindset going into a hard Euros campaign? Yeah, without a doubt. I don't really obviously I think like you said, the last few games have been frustrated because the performances have been there. Um but obviously the results haven't, but I think everybody coming into the camp is positive. Um the new younger lads obviously coming in are all positive and the manager's positive, so I think obviously just the whole camp in general is really positive and we're looking forward to the games coming up. I think Michael said that in one, not my 
Sheffield. So Trevor Carson said earlier on in the podcast that he said how when the, he is convinced that when you lot saw the group, you probably thought, oh, that's a hard group. And then he thinks that by the time your first meeting here was done, Michael will have you were walking out of it going, yeah, we can make Euro 2020. Is yeah, that something that definitely. he's like? Is that sort of manager he is? Yeah, definitely. I think, honestly, he instills confidence in his players. And, and I think the way the country's performed before is I don't really think there's any... Um, anyone like having really any doubts I think obviously we all know we're not sure we've got a really hard group but like I say we're all really positive and hopefully the, the next couple of games especially we can get positive results and, and kick on from there OK do you want to spin again? Yeah. OK so this is from Mason M and they want to know who the worst dressed in the, the squad is. Worst dressed. Worst dressed, yeah. I suppose it's 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 always always just like always in the training. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, Josh, Josh McGuinness was a rascal when he was at Kilmarnock. Like, it's just it's close at the end, man. Probably Josh. Did you put that in speech marks? Or? <laughs> yeah. Josh McGuinness was clueless at the end. Yeah. Yeah. Who, who Josh, in the squad do you see, like, maybe popping up in your Instagram feed or something like that, and they're just wearing something ridiculous? I haven't seen many, you know. Oh, well, you could put Josh in like the best thing ever, and he'd still look rotten. So, yeah, Josh. Definitely, definitely, Josh. Yeah, it has to be Josh. Happy days. Okay, move on to the next one. Thank you, Miss Nam. Right. Well, you're getting left out here. You don't get the spin the wheel. It's not really fair, though. It's not much fun to do it. Trust me. He just seems to be getting the same order. Yeah. Yeah. Yay! Yay. <laughs> Number four. Number four. Uh, Charlotte Carberry. Uh, who is the funniest in the squad? Love. There's a few ones in there. Love yeah. funny. He's, he's, he must be funny because he just said his name and started laughing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's true. Funny. It is, honestly. Like, I can never take him seriously no matter what. Even if he is telling me something serious, I still think there's a joke behind it because he's just, just like a big kid. It's a treat, was not it? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Josh is just. Bad tree, we don't want to be right there. No, they they need the first to be doing the pranks and stuff in the rooms and all. They've done anything recently on this, on this tour? Yeah, I've seen Laugh get caught with you there, but I don't know what he done. He put yeah. something on his seat before he sat down. Oh, it was, it was Bunner. Oh, yeah, he <laughs> put Bunner on his seat. He sat up, sat up over it. Just shoot with him like that, but just something. <laughs> that right. So, That's yeah, Okay, so, report again. Oh yeah, I'm not. I'm not oh yeah, I'm not. <laughs> Definitely not. Okay. All right. This is well. We kind of touched on this before. This is from Cody Fife. Uh, who would win in a race between you two? That's definitely a race side. Like, to see. To be fair. Pretty tough. I think you'd win over the first ten. You know. Oh shit, mate. No, nah, say you'd win over the first ten, and I just take off. You know? No, you wouldn't beat me in a long one. No. No. I like the. Oh. You'd beat me on the first bit. I guess you'll tend to raise them. It would be a good race. Very good race. Oh, I'll find out. I'll beat this race. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'll ask from that wall to that wall. <laughs> it would be a good race. I think that's, uh, that's the last one. Right. Before I had to like uh, get rid of a lot of the questions that were coming in when we put out. Um, uh, do you have any questions for Jordan Jones? Literally, like, every other one was, can I have his number? Can I have his number? Can I have his number? <laughs> It's ridiculous. It's and that was just from the teammates. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, we do have one. We have one more coming in. There were a couple of the players sent one in. George Savo. It's it's a lot of male grooming based questions. He said, "How much gel do you use?" A lot of gel. You can't remember. Tan. Yeah, you don't have any gel in your hair. I know. Like, I haven't done it now. That's just a bit chilling. It's a full top of gel. Savo's another one. He's awful, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> he is. It's a face only a woman could love. <laughs> and when I actually gel my hair, right, I actually, like, I get in the shower before I do it, so it's wet. Do you know what I mean? And I just put a bit of gel on so it yeah. goes. So it's usually like mostly water. It's a wet gel, yeah. It is. Do you want some? No, I don't need any. Okay. <laughs> They're similar styles. Do you prefer like? Too good looking people. You need a sunbed. Definitely need a sunbed. 
as well as your socks. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, so uh, yeah, that's it for the, the following question. So thanks very much, guys. That's well, like say, well, good luck, obviously, for the upcoming games and uh, for the rest of your club seasons as well. Okay. Um, just to say for people watching, obviously, you can subscribe to our other episodes of the Northern Ireland podcast uh, on iTunes and Spotify. You can watch the rest on the Northern Ireland <laughs> YouTube channel. Um, but from Jordan for Paul, who I was going to say thank you to, but not now. Uh, see you next time. Thank you. It's a good ball. The flag stays down. Job done now.